now it's time for another episode of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A show made by Seahawk fans for Seahawk fans. I'm Igor, and here's your host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Igor, and welcome, boys and girls, to a special 415 Super Spooky Halloween Saints edition of your 12-man fan jam show as your Seattle Seahawks get ready to take on the Saints. So sit back, relax, grab a desired beverage or sin of your choice, and remember, we can smell your fear. Let's meet the posse for this episode. First, from the state of Washington, our very own news hound. His 12-man editorials can be found on the SeahawksSal.com website. He's always lurking in the shadows. You know him as Shadowhawk. We know him as Will. Hi, Will. Hi, Moses. How are you? How you doing, sir? I am doing well. I'm still coming to grips with whatever the hell we just saw last Sunday, but <laughs> I'm doing well. Yes, I think we all are. Uh, also, welcome to Posse from the state of Washington, our own fun size Posse member. He's Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hello, all. Welcome back to the show. Um, yeah, that was... Yeah, we're moving on. Okay. <laughs> and also, special guest in the guest seat tonight, fresh off his whirlwind tour of the Pacific Northwest, literally a whirlwind tour. He's more of a treat than a trick. Welcome back, Little Mo. Yay! Hi, Little Mo. Hi. How was your trip to Seattle, Little Mo? Good and rainy. Good and rainy. What was your favorite part? Going to the beast mode still. Oh, yeah, you better believe it. We about bought that story out. All right. <laughs> Matt, as you notice, is not with us. He is apparently out howling at the moon on Bourbon Street and doing God knows what to God knows who. So we it move on. not to know. It gives us deniability. It yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the show is run just like a real NFL football game. We have four quarters and a halftime. Of course, quarter one is news with Will. Uh, quarter two, we discuss the Seahawks Cardinal game, have a special caption in that picture, and look at how we fared in last week's predictions. Uh, halftime is, of course, the best Seahawk themed play along game on the internet. 12 man fan jam show halftime trivia. And Will and Dustin try not to lose to a 10 year old. Good luck, gentlemen. Um, I'm not worried. <laughs> you should. I am. Yeah, yeah you should be. Um, meanwhile, uh, the third quarter is preparing you for the upcoming game between the Saints and the Seahawks. And, of course, quarter four, we make our predictions, prognostications, and game balls. Before we start, please like, share, subscribe to the YouTube Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Join our Facebook group, 12 Man Fan Jam Show, on Twitter at Seahawk Positivity. Email 12 Man Fan Jam Show at gmail.com. Let us know what you think. All right, let's get to the first quarter with Shadow Hawk, Will, and the news. Who knows? <laughs> The Shadow Knows. Yes, news while you are out looking for that perfect mask for Halloween. It's a 12 Man Fan Jam Show news report with the Shadow Hawk. Will, what you got for us? Well, Moses, um, Redskins special teams coach uh, gave uh, Lions fans more than they bargained for last Sunday's game. As it turns out, um, seems uh, Mr. Uh, ben Kutwika or Kutwika, I don't know how to pronounce that, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, had a problem that most guys have had uh, at some point or another. Uh, he had to feel the call of nature, and unfortunately, <laughs> it was in the middle of a game. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. couldn't really leave the field. Yeah. So what he did was he found a spot on the sidelines where he could take care of business into a cu uh, empty Gatorade cup <laughs> and relieved himself in front of everybody. However, he neglected to bring along another coach or anything to uh, shield him while he was <laughs> uh, relieving himself of the said cup. And some Lions fans sitting close to the field got a perfect view of the whole thing. No, um, somebody, of course, took a picture of the act of course. And send it into TMZ Sports, which, uh, of course, published the picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. What's this guy do for a living again? What's his job? He, is he does R. Kelly his... videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> no, man, that piss was digital. But, no, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, special teams coach Ben Kutwika. And, you know, weren't the Lions the, guy, the team that had a special teams coach that drove through a, a – Fast food drive through naked, naked several years ago? Yes, I think they did. The Lions did, yes. They know how to party, man. 
So I don't know what it is with the city of Detroit and public nudity, but it's just it's something. <laughs> Well, you know, I always thought before that that their special teams were number two. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> they're number one. Pretty close. They're, they're pretty much number one. Um, yeah, well, I saw the footage. Well, I didn't see the footage. I saw the blurred picture of that. And but that, you I call them more like inches, inches, oh, not footage. <laughs> didn't I mean? I didn't think this was all that uncommon. I guess the issue was that he had nothing around him. Yeah. Is that what yeah, the problem was? Yeah, people have done yeah. it on the sidelines before, but they've uh, shielded themselves from public view at the time. Yeah. yeah. He just didn't think to do it, which is too bad because now it's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. And now his thing is all over the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, he is coach for the rest in for- Washington Foreskins. So yeah. you want to- you can't right. even blame hackers. Oh, okay. All right. Will, what else you got for us, sir? Well, Moses, uh, NFL teams do some strange things to motivate themselves. And uh, Mike Zimmer had an interesting idea for his uh, Minnesota Vikings, one that somebody on the team took a few steps farther. Uh, During the bye week, uh, players came into the locker room to find uh, stuffed cats sitting around uh, uh, various parts in the locker room uh, with a sign saying, Fat Cats Get Slaughtered. Basically a warning trying to remember them not to get complacent after a 5-0 and uh, start to the season. However, somebody on the team took it one step farther, cutting the throats of said stuffed cats and splattering red paint all over them. Ooh. Yeah. Um, it's not clear. It was originally thought that Mike Zimmer had done it. Uh, he took to the media on Thursday to try to set the record straight. Quote, I want to set the record straight on an erroneous report that I feel attacked my character and reputation. I had nothing to do with that. The stuffed animals I did have here were given to charity and toys for tots. Hopefully not the ones that had their throats slashed. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we get the record straight because my foundation website is getting things saying, your dad's crazy, blah, 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 all this stuff. <laughs> I do a lot of crazy stuff, but I'll admit to it. So there is somebody on the Vikings staff or roster who is crazier than Mike Zimmer, which is a frightening thought, quite <laughs> frankly. Maybe they thought they were like zombie cats and they're just doing the right thing. I don't know. <laughs> Saving the world. Who knows? One cat at a time. Well, you know, fat, yeah, fat cats. Um, d- uh, little Mo, we don't have any cats, do we? No. No, you don't cats. have any, any stuff. I just fat. like cats. You don't like cats, yeah. Why don't you like cats? I, I, I don't know. I just don't. You just don't. All right. <laughs> they're they're kind of okay. lazy, aren't they? Yeah. Now, don't let Grandma Nip know that, because, you know, Grandma Nip is a cat lady, of course. You know what that means. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Agreed, yeah, Dad. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, she's crazy. I take it um, she's not an avid listener to the 12-man fan jam? I would hope not. Um, you know, when I heard this story, I don't know. I guess I'll find out. Yeah. There was a coach for Mississippi State a long time ago, and I want to say, was it maybe a Cheryl or uh, I don't remember his last name. He's a famous coach. Anyway, he apparently they were playing Texas that week, and he brought a Longhorn out to the middle of the practice field after practice one time, and had it castrated in front of the guys. Huh. So that's okay. another strange way to motivate your team. Yeah. And yeah. one of the players responded, "Well, this is fine, but I'm really worried. In two weeks, we play Oklahoma State, and they're the Cowboys. <laughs> so hmm. really worried about that one." But, uh, you yeah, know, these guys really... Is this really... before or after Brokeback Mountain came out? Well, yeah, I think it was before. It was a while ago. It, it, I want to say, Jackie Sherrill, is that maybe... Does that sound like a coach's name? Famous guy? Oh, I don't know. I have maybe, no idea. Maybe, maybe that's just... I don't know. Maybe it's a rhythm, rhythm guitar player for Night Ranger. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, this coach at Mississippi State did this. He castrated the Longhorn right in front of the guys. And, you know, nightmare fuel. But uh, Zimmer, at least he used not real cats. Now, if you used real cats and they did this, I'd have a real problem with that. That would be a little too much, yeah. Yeah, that would be just a tiny too much, I would think. But, just uh, a little bit. Just a Al- little bit. Although, little it should be pointed out that they lost their first game after all this happened. So. <laughs> so, it worked real well for them, so congrats on that. Yeah. Well, congrats on the news, Will. Uh, well done, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and finish the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter, bitches! 
All right, coming up on this special Halloween episode of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A lot of show left. Halftime trivia, an interview with Cajun Man at the start of the third quarter. But coming up next, <laughs> that's right, we talk about last week's tie game and we caption a picture. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ozzy. Please keep listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. Or I will find you. <laughs> And now the 12 Man Fan Jam Show proudly presents another installment of Statsman Mark's Remark. Hey everybody, it's the Statman with his remark concerning that weird and wacky game that saw for the first time since 1972 a score end in a tie with no touchdown. And that actually kind of surprised me a little bit, given all the, the weirdness of the NFL in general. But you know what? What a bizarre game on all levels. It just... Uh, that was torture, and yet it was also beautiful at the same time because that defense is just something else. Both defenses played well, but Seattle really on the road against a division rival, against a team like Arizona that is capable of lighting it up and, and who had been hot recently, that's amazing. That's what I try and take away most from this game is just how amazing our defense is. We know about the blown field goals, and we know about how she got the end of the game, and yet it wasn't long after that game ended where – it did seem appropriate that we ended up in a tie. I somehow I just was my heart wasn't ripped out on that miss. I don't know why we, it was the win was right there in front of us, but it just as easily could have could have been a loss uh, when the other uh, when Arizona's kicker whatever his name was missed it. So amazing defense and and perseverance and toughness and coming out with a tie under the circumstances really is a win for the Hawks. Holy sh! It's the second quarter. Yes, welcome to the second quarter of episode 415 of a very special Halloween Saints edition of your 12 Man Fan Jam show. It's time to review last week's cardinal tie with the Seahawks. Uh, six to six after regulation and after overtime, two missed field goals. We all know that. Uh, Will, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about offensively in this game, but what are your thoughts about the offense after this game? Well, um, First off, our offensive tackles obviously were just being taken to school all night long. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, pretty much beyond dispute. Uh, Russell Wilson is still banged up, and it is affecting him also beyond dispute. Um, but what got me was just again the lack, uh, the the mis- fundamental mistakes, the little things. I mean, it's every time it looked like they were getting something going, there'd be a holding penalty or yep. some other kind of penalty. And that would kill that drive. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or um, there'd be a blown uh, missed assignment or a blown call. We saw in overtime that they were capable of moving the ball down the field. They were capable of making plays when they got their stuff together. Just for so much of the game, there's just so many dumb mistakes, bad penalties. It's uh, this team is better than that, and yeah, we've got an issue at tackle, and we're going to have to try and figure out how to how to deal with that going forward. But it would just be so much better if they would get the little things right, and yes. they did not do that in this game for over sixty minutes. Mm-hmm. of football and by the time they did get it together it was barely almost too late to avoid the loss and not in enough time to get a win yeah it was really it was really a sad sight on offense wasn't it dustin oh absolutely the uh like what was saying the tackles were just ridiculous i mean they were getting beat left and right they were uh getting penalties for holding they were in the to the cardinals credit they were smart um, Arian Sal was with the Cardinals last year. Uh, I don't know how long he was with the team, but at least last year. And Arians knew his capabilities, so they kept bull rushing him, Sowell, on the left, uh, our left tackle. And when he did that, he would have another guy come up on whichever side Sowell wasn't getting, um, uh, getting to. Like if he got blasted one way, this guy would go the other way. And at the same time, they put pressure up the A-gaps. So Russell Wilson not only couldn't, like, fade to one side or the other in the pocket, but he couldn't step up in the pocket. Yeah. (laughs) Right. It was just... And let's give Arizona's D a little credit. I mean, they are pretty amazing. 
they, and they've they got a very they've well. got and, a great pair of edge rushers in Chandler yeah. Jones and Marcus Golden. Oh, yes, they do. And then they yeah, found guys to guy. blitz up the A gap, which complemented that and made it re- oh. really, really hard to do anything. That so gold, it's Golden guy. How how great was he? Uh, yeah, he was he was on it. Yep. Him and Chandler um, Jones both. Absolutely. Um, okay, let's 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 change the subject before I talk to a little more about it. D- Dustin defensively. Um, six points, 90 plays. We've heard the stories about the players being dehydrated. You know, what is your view about this? Is this one of the best defensive performances you've ever seen, even though they gave up over 400 yards? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably the best defensive performance I've ever seen because I don't count it by yards. I count it by points. And they did not give up the points. And those guys left everything on the field. And, I mean, afterwards, they're they're basically drug off the field. I mean, you couldn't do much for them. They had to get IVs. Uh, Sherman, uh, when flying back, he was having issues with uh, regulating his own temperature. He had a fever. Like, I mean, just they left it all out there. Their bodies were broken down. They did what they had to do. It was amazing the heart this team showed. And, uh, yeah, defensively, I, I can't say anything that they didn't do right. They were just on it, and it was just, I mean, people, here's the thing. People are saying it was a bad football game. Nobody scored. Yeah, I can see that if you're a fan of Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and how points have to be put up. This was a defensive battle. Those teams played amazing on defense, which is something that TV doesn't like. But if you're a fan of defense, you do. And just hats off to both teams, honestly. Because God, they just performed on defense. They sure did. And and Will, I, I I really liked what the Cardinals did offensively against us. They kept pounding us with the run and pounding us with the run because it was almost like watching a Rocky film where it's in the fifteenth round, you keep hitting them, you keep hitting them, and you think they're gonna fall and they never did. But I mean, that was a great offensive game plan, I thought, against us to just kind of try to beat us in submission, but it just didn't happen. Oh, totally. I mean, their best, uh, most consistent offensive weapon uh, is David Johnson. And they rode him all game long. And you would think that if a team is out there for uh, 95 plays, that they would give something up. But just, you know, we're down to like four, three, four minutes left in overtime after being out there for so long. Yes. And you have Kelsey McRae chasing down that receiver at the five-yard line. Uh, stopping what should have been a sure touchdown. Yes. You have Earl Thomas knocking out David Johnson at the six-inch line on what looked like a sure touchdown. You have Bobby Wagner and all those guys stuffing Johnson when Arians tried to sneak one up the middle. Yep. After all of that, it's just, I mean, you can talk about yards, you can talk about anything, but just to be able to have a goal line stand like that and keep them out of the end zone. You know, even if Arizona had made that field goal, just keeping them out of the end zone was a phenomenal uh, achievement. For the third straight year? Yeah, third straight year. Yeah. Arizona has only scored six points against us at home. At home. That's right. Uh, Little Mo, I know you didn't really get to see the game except the end. Lucky uh, you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts on the game? I mean, when you heard it was 6-6 tie, what were your feelings? Well, um. Uh... I think this year that our defense is better than the Super Bowl year. Really? Well, but I think our offense kind of needs to step it up. Yeah, they need to step it up a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. Not at all. Um, and I, I was going to ask that question you kind of brought in. Um, it, it, uh, since you said yes to that, I will ask the other two guys, Dustin, is this defense, after last week, do you think this defense is better than any defense we've ever seen? I think that performance was better than any defense we've ever seen, but I don't think that the defense overall is better than we've ever seen. That Super Bowl defense was phenomenal. Yeah. I don't, um, I might be looking at this through um, nostalgia, but I don't remember a weakness on that team, on that defense. Uh, this year, we've had some issues with, the uh, last couple of years, we've had some issues in the secondary which is something I never thought I, that we should say. Yeah. We've had them with uh, community. We've had them with uh, tight ends. There's been some flaws. Yeah. So I I think that um, they're not the best defense we've seen, but I think that we have 
the potential to make it that once we get all of our cast of characters in there and everybody's on the same page, we really haven't had that this year either. Yeah. Uh, Will, your thoughts? Best defense ever? Um, get back to me after the season. I think they have the potential. <laughs> well, it's um, yeah. it's an on- the only way I can answer that. I That's mean, true. I think they have the potential to be better than 2013. I want to see what they do throughout the rest of the season and hopefully into the playoffs. Yeah. Well, for me, I, I still Super Bowl 48 was the best performance I've ever seen a defense. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, before we get to caption that picture, I will say this. Uh, after something like that, it is great to go to Twitter and Facebook and social media. Found some wonderful responses for some people I'd like to share. Um, I believe this is uh, this is Facebook. Uh, Darren Pike wrote, just like that, every prediction for Seattle's final record this season is wrong, which I thought was funny. And true. No one, ever, no one had a tie. Uh, Shane Everly wrote, it's a tie. No one loses and everyone's a winner. <laughs> um, Our society. Bradley Carter put, it only took the Hawks 41 years to end the game in a tie score. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Twitter, true. Brian Ackbert wrote, what the hell am I watching here? This is the most frustrating game ever. It's like watching the M's offense three years ago and it's only football. <laughs> yeah, that's Adam true. Adam Wright on Twitter wrote, who else had a winning treat drawn up and then had to erase it? <laughs> um, Hal Forge, who apparently went to the game on Facebook, said, walking back, it was hilarious listening to the fans of both teams complain about how bad the game was. We were united as one. <laughs> Our own bad Will football, Harrison, bringing people together. Bringing people. Our own Moore Harrison said, seriously, what the hell did we just witness? So, well done, Will. Yeah. I'm still asking. I'm still waiting for an answer. No one gave me an answer. Yeah. John Nicoletta on Facebook said, "Between the Walking Dead and Seahawks Cardinal game, I'm emotionally exhausted." Yeah, I'm with him. Yeah, Sean Roberts. She wrote, "Hawks, you're causing me to eat everything in my chick in my kitchen." <laughs> uh, she also wrote, "Excuse me, Seahawks. I really hate waking up after a loss." Sincerely, me. Um, Claude Taylor on uh, Facebook. Now I know what it's like to be a soccer fan. <laughs> <laughs> Except we didn't get a point. Yeah. That, was, that was the weird thing, though, on last Sunday. The Sounders won, and yeah, the Seahawks right. tied. Right. Go figure. Still undefeated yeah. in the Grays, by the way. Yes. And I love this one. Uh, Peyton, hash, uh, at Peyton DeKemp on Twitter said, I hope these two teams find a football field nearby and find out who the winner actually was. I think that's pretty funny right there. Yeah. Hmm. Looks like and some then, Blue Mountain State stuff. Yeah, at Top Detox on Twitter said, I drank a lot I drank a lot for it to end up in a tie, which is perfect, I suppose. <laughs> hmm. I won't remember it. <laughs> nice. Um, at 30 across, it is legitimately stunning that we didn't lose and also we didn't win and it's so cool and football is good. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Uh, Joshua, I didn't get the whole name, uh, under Corbin Dallas. Uh, I could be oh, walking yeah. into work pissed off tomorrow, but now I'll just be confused, so I guess I have that going for me. <laughs> nice. Um, and, of course, you know, the record was 17-17, and 17, and then they, they tied. 17-17-1. And, of course, 17 and 1. And Go 1, figure. so it's still tied. NFL memes, best worst game ever. <laughs> <laughs> that sums it up. And yeah. finally, from Tin, Tin Schmer at on E Street... Should have given the ball to Lynch. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So now it's time to caption that picture. We did have a game. We do have a picture. It is uh, Pete with the refs. Um, and I know that everyone has a caption for that. We'll caption that picture. Coach, is anybody going to win this damn game? <laughs> <laughs> well said. Dustin, caption that picture. I know. I can't believe Arians doesn't know when he's allowed to challenge either. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, nice. Mine is, uh, it's Pete. Guys, I'm old. I'm tired. Can we just flip a coin? <laughs> <laughs> and then little Mo, caption that picture, buddy. Okay. The ref says, no, Pete, we can't play until someone wins. <laughs> <laughs> we can't keep going. It's in the rules. All right. I think right, somebody now. may have died, really, if they kept yeah. going. Yeah. Kidding. All right, time for two-minute warning. <laughs> Holy sh! it's a two-minute warning! Let's check our prediction challenge from last week. That should be fun, right? And I'm sure uh, that went well. Yeah, first on the scores last week, we're giving a point to Statsman Mark. Uh, the prognostication, three points to me and Mike Pascal. 
Uh, game ball, I gave it to Baldwin. I, he That last drive, he was so instrumental. I had to give it to somebody. So Mike Pascal gets two. Hmm. Over and under, obviously it was the under. Matt, Dustin, and Jose, me and the scores this week look like this. Mike Pascal, five. Me, three. Matt, two. Dustin, two. Jose, two. Statsman, Mark, one. Individual scores through three games. Five games, no. Seven games? Seven games. Six How games. many? It doesn't matter. No, it's seven. Cause Last one doesn't count. Four, one, and one. Six games, you're right. <laughs> Individual scores through the season so far. Hmm. Jose, 26. Dustin, 22. Little Mo 21. Mark Ty Turner, Mike Pascal tied at 18. Then everyone else. Tom at 16. Matt at 15. Will and Statsman Mark at 13. And me at nine. Woo-hoo. Team scores. We've lowered the gap. We've tightened it up a little bit. Woo! More. I think a point, maybe. Uh, team 12 yeah. at 99. Team Posse at 72. We're only 27 points behind them, guys. We're still uh, in And this. that's before the challenge play. I think we should challenge the game ball because nobody really earned anything. Well, Otherwise, they'd have a win. Baldwin so, made that you're not catch. allowed to challenge, so you're penalized one thing. time out. Baldwin <laughs> made that catch that got us down to the 10 at the end of the game. If they kicked the extra point, you'd say that was the play of the game. So I'm going with it. All right. So did they, though? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Half-time. Moving on. Holy sh! It's halftime. Coming up, so much more show. Will the Seahawks win Sunday? Can the Saints find a way to upend the Seahawks? Who dat? We dat? What's that? All these answers and more coming around the corner. But first, it's another wonderful edition of 12 Man Fan Jam Show halftime trivia coming up next. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. <laughs> On the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Straight up now, shoot me. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of the best play-along Seahawk-themed trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. And here's your host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to another edition of the 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia of the World! The trivia game that tests the knowledge of both our posse and our listeners. Our contestants are posse themselves this evening, which is Will, Destin, and Little Mo, and here are the rules. So here's how the trivia game works. There will be two rounds of questions. Each contestant answers one question each round. If they get it correct, they get one point. After two rounds of questions, there will be a final trivia question worth two points. If there's a tie after that, then the tie players go on to a special secret overtime question where the winner becomes reigning 12-man fan jam show trivia champion and also gets a prize chosen especially for them. As an added bonus to those listening on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel, the questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen so you, the viewer and listener, can play along as well. If you do, please let us know how you did on the questions. Remember, there's no Googling, no phone a friend, and please... No wagering. Now let's get ready to play 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. All right, you heard the rules. There is no guessing with the kids because one of the kids is playing, and that is Little Mo. So we did not do that this time. Um, Little Mo is, by the way, in a completely different room, cannot see the questions, doesn't know what's going on, is not allowed to cheat. So Likely story. Well, I could peek through the door, you know. No, you're not. See? <laughs> I'll be watching and peeking through the door. All right. Little Mo, one, two, or three? Two. All right. Dustin, one or three? I'll go one. All right. I'll Will's take gonna, three. Will's going to take three. Oh, uh, good call, man. Two, two football questions and, of course, one non-football question. All right, here we go. Uh, Dustin, you are first. True, Steve, I won one. You were number one. Yeah. The first time the Seahawks beat the Saints in New Orleans was 1985. Who had an interception return for a touchdown for the Seahawks in that game? Was it Kenny Easley, Jacob Green, or Willie Tullis? And some organ for you to think about. Oh, uh, you know, as soon as you started asking the question, I was thinking Jacob Green, so I'm going to go Jacob Green. You were thinking Jacob Green. Yeah. Defensive end, Jacob Green. Yeah, I thought it'd be kind of a cool story. Well, guess what? Hmm. It's Jacob Green! Woo! Yeah, strange but true. And That's Justin, a new sound effect, yeah. well, by the way. That's your correct answer for tonight. Thanks, special effects department. The, the special effects is fantastic. All right, Little yeah. Mo, you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Little Mo, your question is this. This is a football question. Will, you know what Yay! Is. 
All right. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Last time the Seahawks played the Saints in New Orleans was 2010. How many touchdown passes did Drew Brees throw against us? Was it two, three, or four, little Mo? Uh, just peek through the door. <laughs> no cheating. What'd you say? <laughs> two. He said two. All right. And the correct answer is... Uh, I'm sorry, it's four. Uh-huh. I mean, oh, man, you'll get it next time. You'll get it next hey, time. Back off my kid, man. All right. <laughs> Will, you know what that means. You get the... Yes, I do. ...horror film question, or the scary movie question, if you want to say horror or horror. I don't know. All right, number three. What actress did Jack Nicholson... Okay, Jack Nicholson was movie The Shining, and Shelley yes. Duvall played his partner, his wife, but what actress did Jack Nicholson actually want to play opposite him in the movie The Shining? Was it Jessica Lange, Meryl Streep, or Kathleen Turner? Who did Jack want to play Shelley Duvall's point, part in The Shining? Jessica, Jessica Lange, Meryl Streep, or Kathleen Turner? And I guess the guy in the dog suit? No, oh my god. No. Guy in the dog suit does not count, and now I won't sleep tonight. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I'll go... Uh... I'll go Jessica Lang. I don't know. He'll go. Yeah, I'll go Jessica. I don't know. I'll go Jessica Lang. Yeah, what the hell? I mean, well, the answer is Jessica. Oh, Lang. nice oh, job. Wow. Yeah, well done. So Will's on. That's the how board. it's done, Lil Mo. That's how it's done. <laughs> Take notes, boy. All right. Just uh, wait. Just wait. <laughs> oh man. All right. Uh, that means Will gets picked four, five, or six. I will do four. Will would do four. Uh, Little Mo, five or six? Uh, six. All right. Dustin, you get five. All right. Five. All right. Hey, Will, guess what? Yes. You got, a, you got another scary movie question. All right, oh, here it brother. is. I know. You're two for two. Uh, how many days did it take to film the original movie Halloween? The original Halloween, 74, I want to say. Oh, wow. How many days did it take to film the original Halloween? Was it 20 days, 30 days, or 40 days? The original Halloween, how many? 20, 30, or 40 days? I'll go... Oh, what the heck, I'll go 20. What the heck? He's going to go 20. Yeah. Oh, nice job. 20 days. I want to say that can only be a question because of how short amount of time it was. Yeah, and I think a $300,000 budget, which is amazing. All right. Dustin. Yes, sir. When the Seahawks played the Saints in the playoffs in 2014, who had the most receiving yards? Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse, or Golden Tate? Oh. Most Austin's receiving again? yards. Baldwin, Curse, or Tate? Most receiving yards in the playoff game. I don't know. I was pretty drunk that game. Um, okay. Yeah, tailgating was awesome, though. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say Baldwin because I like Doug Baldwin. Why not say Baldwin? I mean, all right. You said Baldwin. And the correct answer is Baldwin. Uh -huh. Yeah. I remember so, just qu real quick, awesome memory about that game. Um, yes. We're out there tailgating. Everybody's having a good time. Uh, there was rainstorms that came swarming oh, yeah. in right before the game. Oh, yeah. And we're out there yep. tailgating. And normally rainstorm happens and people are like hiding under stuff. Soon as it started raining, everybody started jumping and having a good time in the tailgate awesome. because it was at the same time the Macklemore song came on that um, the ceiling can hold can't us hold or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and everybody in the in the freaking uh, tailgate started jumping at that and singing that song because everybody knew Drew Brees can't play good and bad weather. So it's yeah, like from right. that point on, we're like, we got this. That's awesome so memory. Awesome memory. That is an awesome memory. <laughs> All right, number six, a little mo. You ready? Yep. Okay, you're well aware uh, of the Marshawn Lynch Beast Quake touchdown run against the Saints in the playoff game in 2011. Yes, because that's why I love him. That's why you love him, I know that. But here's the question. How long was that run? Was it 66 yards, 67 yards, or 68 yards? How long was that Oh, run? that's dirty. <laughs> 66, 67, or 68 yards? Six, 67. 67. You sound pretty confident. Are you pretty confident with that? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, you With should good be. reason. You got it. Seven. Final answer. Sixty-seven. All right. Nice job, man. Well, here you we play go. Papa Doc. Here we go. Uh, I love yeah. for the final question. There will be a winner. 
Uh, the final question is high, low. The order we will go will be Destin, Little Mo, and Will. Hi. Hi. Um, closest one without going over gets it. If you all go over the closest one to it, gets it. Here you go. Uh, Dustin. Uh-huh. How many total yards rushing did Marshawn Lynch have in that very playoff game in 2011? How many total oh, rushing hell. yards overall did he have? We know he had at least 67. Oh, 122. Oh, Dustin no. says 122. Little Mo? Uh, 157. 157. Will? 123. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> oh, oh. The actual number of yards that Marshawn Lynch had against New Orleans in the playoff game in Seattle in January of 2011, Beast Quake included. 131! Oh! Woo-hoo. Would have took it all tonight, baby! Dang it! Oh, I repeat, oh, asshole. Well, congratulations. <laughs> hey, I deserve one after what happened in the live show, okay? No, I agree. I agree. Congratulations, sir. Yeah, that you was do. Awesome. That, that was some sweet uh, sweet revenge there. No, no doubt yeah. about it. Smart play. Smart play. And a wonderful game played by another award-winning, action-packed, amazing game of 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. Of oh. the world. <laughs> we'll be back in the second half after this quick station identification. It's time for a quick 60 second interview with Cajun Man. Cajun Man. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. All right. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show <laughs> on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. And now it's time for a Moses 60 second interview. Yes, hello everyone. It is Moses, and I'm pleased to interview well-known Saints fan and New Orleans City resident, Cajun Man. Cajun Man, thanks for being with us today. Salutation! So it's my understanding that you've been a Saints fan since birth? Since conception. Oh, okay. You are a big fan too, right? Saints Nation! Well, that's awesome. Good for you. Do you really like your head coach? What's his name? Um, Coach Payton. Yeah, Sean Payton. What are your thoughts on him? Termination! Oh, so I take it you're upset that your Saints are 2-4. and four. Abomination! It's been a long season so far. How do you cope with watching the Saints this season? Inebriation! Oh, you drink a lot, huh? Intoxication! Oh, you drink a whole lot. Okay, well, I hope you don't drive after the games, do you? No transportation! Good man, good man. So how do you think this Sunday's game will go against the Seahawks? You know, the Seahawks have a really great defense. Suffocation! And on offense, we have Russell Wilson. Magician! How do you think the Seahawks are going to do Sunday? Total destruction. Oh, so you don't think there's any chance for your Saints to win this weekend? Realization. Oh, (laughs) I'm sorry, Cajun man, but hey, don't cry. I mean, there's still a chance your team won't be in last place in your division. I mean, as long as the Panthers are still there. Celebration. Thanks for joining us, Cajun man. Reveron. Holy sh! it's the third quarter. Yes, welcome to the third quarter of your 12-man fan jam show. You, yes, you getting beats down in Mardi Gras. Like or comment on this video. Join us on Facebook at 12-man fan jam show Facebook page. Email us, 12-man fan jam show at gmail.com. Tweet us, Seahawk Positivity. Make this all part of your Seahawk fix. Do it now before you wind up in the gutter at Bourbon Street with Matt. All right. (laughs) (laughs) He likes to cuddle. (laughs) <laughs> this quarter we take a long look at the New Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. Here's your tail of the tape. Um, what is interesting about this is as bad as their defense is, their offense has been spectacular, to be honest. Um, their offense is uh, number two overall, number one pass. Now 28 in a run, but um, apparently they don't have to do that. Uh, Dr. Dustin, there are a lot of news-breaking things that happen as we record this on Friday. But what is, I guess I can give you a couple key injuries to this game. What do you got? Uh, to, to be honest with you, I think the number one key injury for me, Michael Bennett. Now it's unexpected. Everybody thought he was going to play. Yep. Um, then now it looks like he might have surgery and it he could might. end the season. So Yeah, yeah, he might. That's going to be a huge loss. I agree. Cam yeah. Chancellor out again, but they've been dealing with that. I think they're a lot better with him in there, but. They are, but Kelsey McCray has been getting some quality yeah. snaps, and yeah. so I mean, it's it, overall that yeah. better's the team when that guy can do that. So, yeah, um, gosh, little Mo, Michael Bennett might be out. This could be a big deal, right? 
Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. What do you think about our defensive line without him? I mean, we, we got some guys, right, Lomo? Yeah, because we normally, you know, switch people in and out, so I'm not mm. that worried about it. I mean, I know it's going to be a problem, but I'm not that worried about it. You're okay with it. You're you're pretty calm about it. Uh, what about you, Will? What's your thought about him being at least out for this game? Let's just say this game because he might need surgery. He might not. We don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, Carol said it was a cartilage issue. So even if he does have to have surgery, it probably would not be the season-ending variety. But Good. as far as this game is concerned, um, Frank Clark uh, has basically been playing the Michael Bennett role of being able to um, – play defensive end and also move inside and rush from the interior. Um, obviously, he's uh, Michael Bennett's going to be missed, but I think Clark can step in and get some pass rush, both from the outside and the inside. So yeah, I, think, I, I, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I mean, I think this is – Frank Clark was a guy that they brought in to eventually replace Michael Bennett, and I think that uh, this is going to be a huge uh, job interview for him for the future to see if he can do the things that Michael Bennett can. Uh, Biggest problem being he's got to grow his beard out to make this work. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. He better get going. And yep. he needs the small shoulder pads. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. Small very good point. Well very good point. Very good point. Um, we are pretty deep on the defensive line, I guess you could say. But, man, Michael Bennett, you know, I would be Debbie Downer here because I am, you know, the Moses of the, the Reverend of Seahawk positivity. But, man, this guy has been a beast this year. Um, and I'm hoping that it's not major. Obviously, we all are. Uh, but uh, wow, and and do we think this happened in the Atlanta game? That that shot that no one talked about because they were too busy doctoring the film to make it look like there was pass interference. Uh, mechanism mechanism of injury tells me no. Okay. Um, that looked more like a ligament type thing. Okay, I think he he must have done something where he stepped hard and twisted wrong in okay. practice. I'm assuming. Okay, just because it doesn't match to me. All right. Okay, I'll take your word on it. Um, mm -hmm. Will. Yes. Uh, we're not going to do weather. We're first off, Matt's not here for his wonderful weather report. I'm sure he'd say something very English, like, you know, centigrade, it'll be 25 or whatever. But they're indoors, but, so we don't yeah, care. Yeah, they're in a dome. So, yeah, yeah, we don't care. So um, we're just going to go right to the Seahawks win this game. Um, will the Seahawks win this game if what? The Seahawks win this game if they run early, run often, and establish a running game. Because okay. it looks like George Font will be our left tackle. And Yay. when he did the run blocking, he actually got some push. He looked, like, he looked pretty good out there. So run, run, run as fast as you can. Uh, saying that because they are the 23rd running defense, 28th passing defense, 29th overall. This defense is not in good shape for the Saints. Uh, but my goodness is um, Drew Brees having quite a year throwing the ball. But uh, that kind of plays to our strengths as well. All right, uh, Little Mo, the Seahawks win this game if what happens? Well, I agree with him. You get the winning game, and if our offensive line can actually block, yeah. it would help a lot. Yeah, and I think Fant did a pretty good job against a really good Cardinals defense. This is going to be a step down. So hopefully, you know, I keep saying this and then watch. It'll be, you know, this defense will come out ready to play. But um, hopefully Fant can uh, keep working on what he's what he's started. Uh, Dustin, Seahawks win this game if what? You know what, man? I sound like a broken record, but I'm on the same page with those guys. Um, Seahawks win if they can establish a run game because not only does that help our offense and take pressure off Russell Wilson and his inability to move and the offensive line's inability to protect him, but it also keeps the Saints' offense off the field, which I think is their only threat because their defense is not good, but their offense is, rock, is full of rock stars. So they have to run the ball. They're rock stars. Um, I'm going to go a little bit different just to be just to be silly, although well, I agree with you guys. To. Yeah, running the game, running the ball, obviously, is a big, big key. But to me, the yeah. Seahawks win this game if the offense can do what they're supposed to do against the 29th-ranked defense of the Saints. If they are unstoppable, and I don't care if it's throwing the ball or running the ball, if they take huge chunks of yards at a time and score touchdowns, not field goals, touchdowns, that, that puts pressure off our defense because at home Drew Brees has been pretty amazing. Now I know they, you know, awful defense, but they are the number one passing offense in the NFL, and of course that plays to our strengths. But we don't want to get in that kind of match with him. I want our team to score a lot of points in this game. So I think we win this game if we our offense 
rolls over their defense to the point where no matter it doesn't matter what Drew Brees does, we're scoring touchdowns whether they're scoring field goals or whatever. To me, that's the big thing overall. Just this defense, this offense that we thought was going down, you know, to Arizona last week was going to put 35 points up because they have every time they go down, puts up six against a really great Cardinal defense, yes. But they just look, they didn't look like they were in sync at all. And they've got to get their act together this week because I hate to say this, I'm more concerned about this game than I was about the Cardinals game. Yeah. They got up for the Cardinal game. That's a big rivalry. I get that. But we're going down to a Saints team that feels like they got nothing to lose. One of the best quarterbacks in NFL history who is blazing hot at home. Mm -hmm. And I I just, it has the makings of a trap game. That's all I'm saying. I'm a little worried. Uh, Not only that, I don't think it's uh, necessarily a trap game, but the defense left everything on the field last weekend, man. Yes. I mean, they're physically still recovering from that game. So it it does have the potential to be a letdown for the Hawks. So I agree. It sure does. Um, little Mo, do you think it could be a trap game? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, well, a game where you should win easily, but you wind up losing? Um, yeah. Yeah. You can Maybe. see it, right? With Drew Brees? I, I could see it, yes. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't either. What about you, Will? Well, I, I tend to lean more in Dustin's direction. I wouldn't call it a trap game so much as a recovery game. Mm-hmm. Um, I just look at what uh, Seattle's what Seattle looked like in Carolina last January after having to play an ice station zebra the week before. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was rough. What's, what's going to happen now that they're coming off of the uh, mm-hmm. game that never never ended practically? Right. Yeah. We just need another buy. But nice. hey, this is what legends are made of, man. There so, you go. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if they can hold. Well, I guess we'll, well, that'd be a nice segue because I guess we're going to find out what you guys think about if it's going to be a kind of game they're going to struggle or not because this is the end of the third quarter. It's the end of the third quarter, bitches. Hey, coming up, it's time to make our predictions, our prognostications, our game balls for this very special Saints Seahawk game. Remember, you're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. Happy Hawkeween, everyone. We'll be right back after this. Hello, everybody. This is Statsman Mark. And when I'm not listening to Charo's greatest hits on 8-track tape, I'm listening to the 12-man Fan Jam Show. And now the 12-man Fan Jam Show proudly presents another installment of Statsman Mark's Remarks. Hey, everybody. It's the Statsman once again to talk about the New Orleans Saints. And, um, you know, this is a road game, a second straight road game. I, I believe probably an early start, and uh, this is coming against a very beatable team, and unlike a week ago where we faced a very fierce defense, we're practically facing, uh, well, let's just say the Saints defense is, is somewhat challenged, <laughs> and um, our offense was a week ago, but again, that has a lot to do with going up against Arizona, who's very motivated, and also, you know, we're banged up already along an offensive line that, is, of course, is still a work in progress, but one that I'm still very happy with in terms of Brit. Um, you know, in Fetty and 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 Glowinski, um, and we'll see uh, what kind of patchwork we put together for this coming week in New Orleans. Um, but again, very winnable game, and really, and it, this should be an expected win given what's going on in, in New Orleans, if nothing else. And with that said, I do believe the Hawks will come alive and uh, start scoring some points offensively. And so I'm going to call this a 30 to 17 Seahawks win. I believe I'm going to stick with a Christine Michael uh, prediction, say he will have over 100 yards rushing and one rushing TD. And I'm going to go ahead and give Michael my game ball. Holy sh**, it's the fourth quarter. Yes, it's time for the fourth and final quarter of this Hawkeween episode of 12-Man Fan Jam Show. Matt's not here, but that's for him. Hey, before we make our predictions, let's do a top three, shall we? Yes, the top three. Based on this week's uh, press conference, Richard Sherman dressed up like Harry Potter, if you missed that. Um, did it for his kids, he said. It was pretty funny. It wasn't, you know, I don't think anybody took it as a slam on the next team or anything. Just said, my kid wanted me to dress up as Harry Potter, so I did. And, of course, J.K. Rowling then responded on Twitter saying, hey, did you know I was a Seahawk fan? Well, I am. 
And then parentheses, don't ask me about anything on the team except for Richard Sherman, which I thought was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the fact that she had a great sense of humor about it was pretty good. All right. Yeah. So, so I decided, I thought, you know, what would happen if Richard Sherman was actually a wizard? If he actually was Harry Potter, what kind of spells would he, would he cast? So You're a wizard, Richie. Yeah. So yeah. from our offices located in the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry come the top three spells Richard Sherman, the wizard, would actually cast <laughs> if he were actually Harry Potter. Hmm. All right. So what would Richard Sherman cast his spells? Well, the number three is uh, he would wave his wand and say, Awarius Macranium. And uh, that's a spell that allows every player on defense to know exactly what his assignment is on a play. <laughs> so, oh, yikes. Yeah. Warius Macranium. Um, I like that spell. <laughs> n- number, number two is Chunkiest Superium, which fills the sideline water buckets with chunky soup. <laughs> I didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but, you know. And my favorite one, and I think this is going to be Little Mo's favorite, um, the number one spell that Richard Sherman, the wizard, would cast if he were actually Harry Potter, Crabtreeus Mediocritum. <laughs> every receiver he faces fear him. All right. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Little Mo, you want to tell him every time you get Crabtree in your uh, collection, football card collection, like you get a, a pack of football cards, what do you do with Crabtree's card? I kind of whip him. Yeah, he kind of rips it up. <laughs> He'll say, Dad, look, Crabtree, and I'll just start ripping it. <laughs> yeah, actually, Nick, a few years ago, you wrote mediocre on him first, then you ripped it up. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's it my warms sign. my heart to see children being raised right these days. It is the truth. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's move on to the Saints game. Uh, current line is uh, Seattle uh, by two. I think is that right? Yeah. And the over under will be at forty three and a half for our purposes. All right. Quick disclaimer: these numbers have been presented for entertainment purposes only. Twelve Man Fantasy Show does not endorse betting on anything anytime. Don't take these or anything we ever say on the show ever seriously. All right, let's make our predictions. Here's how it's tabulated: prognostications on the button, three points closest. A point if nobody hits. Game balls maybe more than one, two points. Uh, predictions, both teams score five, one team three, overall one, over under two. All right. Now let's look for this week's picks. We'll come to Little Mo in a second, but first his teammates. Um, Jose, score 33-17. to 17. Prognostication, the Saints don't score on their first possession. Something they've done the last four games in a row. So I'm giving it to him because it's something they've done the last four games in a row. And he says, Breeze is my fantasy quarterback. That's how I know that. So I'm Way to go out on a limb, limb, sir. Way yeah. to go out on a limb. He's <laughs> stretching. He's stretching, but I'm going to give it to him. Um, the same game ball, uh, Graham goes off against his former team. And the key to the game is run the effing ball. All right, that's Jose. Tom said 35-21, Hawks. We get our running game going against a porous Saint defense, and we'll see uh, C. Mike go for a buck 25 and game ball to Michael as well. Uh, Mike Pascal, Seattle 23-20. Breeze, more passing yards than Russell, and game ball to Thomas. Mark Ty Turner. Uh, partially going, was surprised no one picked a tie. Uh, partially going last week's <laughs> prediction. 31 nice. 17 Hawks. Russell Wilson, four touchdowns and game ball to Jimmy Graham on his return to Narlands. All right, nice. Little Mo, you're part of Team 12. What is your score? Um, 35 to 17. 35 to 17. What is your prognostication? Um, uh, uh, three sacks. Three sacks for Seattle? Yes. All right. And who's your game ball? Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham. Feed the beast. All right. Um, on our side, Stasby and Mark said 30-17. Seattle, Michael, over 100 yards, and he gets his game ball. Matt predicted 34-14 Seattle. Give his game ball to Jimmy Graham on his return to New Orleans. He'll get three. He has three touchdowns thrown his way. All right, Dustin, what do you got? I'm going to say that game ball goes to Michael. I think he's going to get um, probably three touchdowns. Is that and your prognostication? No, no. I think it should be an easy prognostication like uh, Jose. I'm going to say that both teams will throw the ball in the first quarter. Oh, boo. No. Just, just, I'm just playing, man. I'm just playing. Of boo. course, three touchdowns for Michael is my prognostication. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, score I think is going to be 28, uh, probably 24 Seahawks. You know, because he knew that, that's why I, I gave it to him. I had to give it to him because he said the last four games they've done that. So I know. I'm just giving him crap. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Will, what do you got for a score? Um, my final score prediction is 24-21 Seattle. All right. Prognostication? Um, I'm going to say Michael gets a rushing and a receiving touchdown. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say prognostication. <laughs> <laughs> no, you shouldn't ever say no. that. <laughs> prognostication, and, prediction, and game the ball game- reception. <laughs> the the game ball will go to Frank Clark, who I think will step in for Michael Bennett and wreak havoc right. in a good way. I think so, yeah. too. I, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, my turn. Well, after kissing our sister last week, at least that's what I hear a tie is like. I've never done that, but I'll ask a 49er fan later. The Seahawks <laughs> go down to the Big Easy, where on paper, a terrible defense of the Saints should be easy picking for the Seahawks. But Drew Brees is on fire, and so is their offense. But how many times have we seen a great defense beat a great offense over and over and over? No trick here. This game's a treat. Watch the offense led by a ground attack run through the Saints defense like some bad jambalaya runs through you. You know what I'm talking about. Watch the Seahawks defense get not one, not two, but yes, three turnovers. That's my prognostication. Led by all-world defensive back Harry Potter. I'm sorry, Richard Sherman. (laughs) And watch the Bayou turn blue. As the Seahawks win by a score of Seattle Seahawks 34, New Orleans Saints 20. All right. Looks like it's time to bring another wonderful and amazing 12-man fan jam show to a sad close. We're so glad you decided to waste some time with us. We certainly hope you laughed a little and maybe you learned a little something. What did we learn in this episode? Well, we learned that some Redskin coaches just are number one. And, <laughs> yeah. and we learned that, that Zimmer... Um, likes fat cats. We learned Lomo doesn't like cats. And uh, we learned that Moses loves his computer. What are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? You want to square up? Come at me, bro. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. I got to go beat my son now. I'm kidding. People don't. I'm not doing that. No. We're. Okay. Although we got into an amazing, amazing, amazing pillow fight. We got into. (laughs) Ha! We got to an amazing pillow fight out in Seattle. Oh my gosh. I mean, John Cena pillow fight. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. There it goes. <laughs> sing, sing it again, Lil Mo. And his name is John Cena. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's what we did. We like jumping at each other with pillows. All right. So pillow fight after this. All right. So on behalf of my partner in crime who's not here, Matt. Matt, have fun in New Orleans. Not too much. Not too much. Our news hound, Shadowhawk Will. Statsman Mark. Dustin as the Beaver. Little Mo. Roger Goodell. Mozette. Drew Brees. Buddy Hackett. Sheila McRae. Art Carney. Good night, everybody. And go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Do, 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs>